gettable car. It's really the Japanese version of the Ford Capri, but without the Essex credibility. The strength of these cars seems to be in their build quality. Even the worst example is tight to drive and doesn't squeal or rattle. It was devised from the Toyota EX1, a 1970s concept car. The engine and gearbox are both excellent, giving good economy and performance. The simple mechanics mean that they're easy to tune, so it's not a problem if you want to squeeze an ounce more juice out of them. These Celicas are rare but cheap to buy, and prices are actually rising. It looks like Celicas are becoming something of a classic. Julian is one such enthusiast. Both he and his iguana are a common sight driving around his hometown of Bolton. But now he's got his heart set on another car, and his 1978 Toyota Celica has to go. Hi, my name's Julian. As you can see, this is the interior of my Toyota Celica, and I'm selling it for £500. And this is my pet iguana, Schumacher. Say hello, Shui. I'm cruising the streets and that, it's an eye catcher and like, it looks different. It's got something that modern cars haven't got. I mean, it's low down, sleek, sporty, and it really pulls the birds. And the good thing about these cars is they just leave the modern cars, the hot hatches standing, 20 year old, no fuel injection, multi-valve, but the engines really work. And the best thing about these old cars is, on a light women, these don't lose the looks. Look at that. The neighbours complain, not surprising really, I've got bits in the garden, half a car there, there's a pop shaft in the kitchen, there's bits everywhere, it's like auto jumble time, I mean like Julian Scrapyard, what can you say? I've lost a few girlfriends over my love of cars, because the time and effort I put into them, I'd have to talk about cars, I've got model sleekers in my bathroom, I've got parts everywhere, magazines, they think cars come before women. And I think they're probably right. What do the girls think about this car? Well, they like the black leather, well, imitation leather. It's like 20 year old, so they've never been in one before. And uh, when you put your foot down, boy, they like that. Yeah, he's a bit of a Toyota freak as well. So I was going to sign him up for the Toyota Enthusiast Club, but hmm, as another club member, like a mascot sort of thing. But I'm not paying £16 for him. Just like me, he likes Toyotas, Salikas. He's happy to sit there. I think he likes this car though, this one. This is his favourite car. It's it. Well, the reason I'm selling this one is because I've got to fund an RA28 Salika, which are rare uh, and they're really, really nice. And I've always wanted one. Uh, I don't want to get rid of it, but I need the money. I'm down here looking for Julian's pet iguana. He was a bit scary. Well, where should we start? Well, basically, all Toyota Celicas leak like a sieve, so you should check around the seals here on the windscreen to see if there's any cracking, and feel on the carpets for any dampness. Another favourite leaky place on Celicas is here around the rear tail lights, which allows water to collect in the boot. In fact, it's not uncommon on a test drive to hear a loud sloshing noise from the back of a car. Another thing to look out for on a Toyota Celica is the seats. Toyota thought it wise to put a metal bar along the base of the seat, which resulted in people coming back after a long journey feeling twisted and almost crippled. Many owners have removed the offending article, but rub your hands along the base of the seat to see if you can feel the metal bar. If you can't, you're in luck, but if you can, you're going to need a cushion. More leaks, I'm afraid. Now, the rear three-quarter window rubbers on Celicas tend to perish. Now, you can either order them from Japan, which could cost a fortune and take forever, or you can do what many Celica owners do and simply go to your local scrapyard. After all, you can get a whole car for about 25 quid. The Toyota Register have told me it's worth much more than that. I'm not a great big fan. I think it's only worth 450 quid. Yeah, I'm pretty unsure about these as well. I mean, a good one probably won't go down in price, but I don't think they're collector's cars. I reckon Julian's is worth 650 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? First of all, I'm going to sell it for like £500, but I'm in an owner's club, a few people have seen it and said, right, try and get a 1000 at least. But I tried that, I didn't get 1100 so many people phoned up, but I've got a bloke coming today, he knows about the price, but I'll see what he thinks. 
Yeah. It's a 79, it's early one. Yeah. Uh, it's got it through MOT. It's been like totally under sealed from you. Uh -huh. And like, it's a really good car. It's original wings. I mean, boot lid solid, I'll show you that in a minute. Right. Engine base solid. Clean, yeah, but engine's sweet, ticks over lovely, carbs are set up on it. I've started at 1100, but it's worth a little bit more, but I need to get shut of it, I can't afford to keep it, so it's got to go. It's a good car, good solid car, original wings, original arches. He'll let me an offer, uh, I want about at least 900 for it. I'll start 600 and come up a bit, see what he says. It's nice and smooth. Don't burn oil. So, like, how much are you looking for for the car? Well, I'm six or seven, something like that. So, I don't need really to think to that. Uh, 750. Hmm. Uh, Show sure now. Mm. Ah, but I don't have to sell it. I mean, it's not yeah, if I, I need know. the money. Okay. Well, uh, seven seven five. Seven sixty. Seven seven six five. Seven seven six five. It's final offer, but say want some work, but I'll buy it today at that. Seven sixty in a fag. All right, go on then. <laughs> Get fags out then. Right. Cheers. 760 Jew, that's what we said, yeah? Yeah, all yeah. Right, mate. Is it all there? Yep. Alright, nice one. Check oh. it if you want. I've got the key. Just one key. Yeah, just one key. Mm. Thanks very much. I can't believe you're not down 300 quid. That, that was like way over the top, but I had no choice. I need the money. There we are, Schumacher. Well, the car's gone. 760 quid. Look at that. Absolutely gutted. I'd like a lot more for it, but. What can I say? Well, until this gang. Well, you got that well wrong, didn't you? So did you. Yeah, you got a lot more wrong than I did. Listen, Richard, we buy them a little bit cheaper, we sell them a little bit dearer, that's how we earn money. Yeah, well, you're going to have to put your money where your mouth is, because your task this week, and you did choose to accept it, is to brave an auction and buy a bargain for under £3,000. Ringers, bangers, dodgy deals. These are the myths that surround car auctions. But fortunately, they're only myths. Because if you keep your cool, you can buy a good car at a bargain price. So can you guess where I am this week? I'm at the seaside. I'm on the south coast at Shoreham Car Auctions. Right, I'm here nice and early. I've got £3,000 in the budget. Let's see if they got anything for me. Well, this is it. Here we go. Can you see that? It's full of cars in here for me. Danny is the owner, Steve. I'm trying to get a word in with him. All right, Steve. Oh, all right, how you, yeah, not bad. How are you doing? Very well. Keep Plenty in here tonight. Looks good. Mm, 250 or so. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm looking for is something like a little family car. Or five family, door or five door, 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 door hatch. Yeah, five door family what car. What sort of price range you in? Up to about three, four grand. Yeah. If you want to walk around, as you say, and then come back if you see anything you like, then I'll talk you through it and right, let me know what it's all about. Yeah, lovely. Catch up with you later. Nice Super. to see you. Cheers. Any more? Would you like to have a sign, please, sir? Now we're up here on the rostrum. This is where the action takes place. The key to an auction is to have your wits about it. What you do is you set yourself a limit and don't go above it. You don't want... You bought it. Ah! When you're at an auction, stickers on the windows, always read carefully what they say, whether they're guaranteed mileage, whether the car's been involved in any accidents, any claims on it. Read everything. It's very important. chosen something like this is because of what it is. It's a five-door Cavalier, it's family orientated, sunroof, got power steering, it's nice miles, 78,000 miles, and it's private owner with full service and it looks magnificent, looks great. There's another one up the end here. This one's done 68,000 miles, one owner, full service history. It's beautiful. It's absolutely perfect what we're looking for. It's got a sunroof, it's five doors, hatchback, it's great. 
I think I've got about half an hour to kill, so there's nothing more to do than to have a nice cup of tea, look in my guide, make sure I've got the prices in my head, make sure I'm sorted where I want to be, make sure I've got the money in my pocket, obviously, and uh, just drink my tea. That's about it. It's getting quite exciting now, the atmosphere's building up. You only get a very short amount of time. Once it, the auction starts, the cars start flying through, and that's the only opportunity you get to actually get under the bonnet and have a good look. You need to get into the rostrum area, get under the under the hammer, so to speak, make yourself known to the auctioneer that you're interested. Don't get carried away with yourself. Have your price in your head. Don't go above it. Hopefully, the hammer will go down for you. As you can see, the interested people will pull bonnets, poke around inside, lift caps off, pull dipsticks out. It's a serious fire. The man wants that car. Excellent condition and uh, for his age, he's got absolutely outstanding mileage on the motor car. Get on the way. Start me on that where you want to be with that. 23 trade in here. Red 2300 pounds bid is there. And 15, 24 if you want to go. And 2375 gone. 2375, 24. 25, 24, 25 is here, 24, 50 gone, 24, 50, it's on the sale at 24, 50, I put it away, 24, Made too much money, so we'll leave that one. 25, 25, and done then twice, and you like it, 25, 25. Stand by the car that you want, listen to the man start it up, you get to hear the engine starting from cold, you can hear any clattering or rattling noises, also gives you an opportunity to get the bonnet up even earlier. Our next photo car, one yourselves to the noise, it comes 547, is the full list of one for an X5 for the motor car, as you can see there are a spoiler on that as well. Block looking motor here up here with me, have the motor car and bid me accordingly, where we started to get it out of the way. We've got 2200 pounds started, bit more than that, 21 is big. 21 taken in with a 50 got, 22 got here now, 22 50 with a 23 got. And a half, 24 gone. Go on, it's 2400 is here. The hammer could be coming down to me. 2400 credits down to me in a minute. Put it up and then twice. Ah, we bought a car. There you go, 2400 pounds. What a nice car. All we've got to do is leave a deposit and uh, we can take it for a drive. How are you paying? Cash. 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 We got here early. We narrowed down a target list of two cars. We missed one, but we got the second one. We actually budgeted for £2,500. We got it for £2,400. It drives lovely. It's a bargain. We've now got the paperwork. All we need to do now is find out if it makes it all the way back to London. Cheers. Well, it looks like a nice motor, but you'll have to wait till next week to see if I've got a banger or a corker. If you are going to go to auction, get yourself down to newsagents and get a book like this. It will give you a guide to practically every car on what you should be paying. Coming up next, Russia's own Trabant and the gorgeous Jeep Cherokee. Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes? My friends all die for ships, I must make a man. something matters to you, it still matters at 35,000 feet. So be good to yourself. Fly Emirates. I'm not as young as I used to be, but I like to keep in shape. So I put in a few workouts when I can. This works up a sweat. A personal train is a real plus for me. This is tough. So is this. And if I have time for a snack, where better? I'm not as young as I used to be, but sometimes... Holmes Place. A little effort, a great result. It's not fair, it's not fair! For the last time, Ollie, he can't come to your party, he's an alien. Now come out of the cupboard. No! What about fancy dress? What? 
fancy dress. I uh, got the ridiculous invitations rent out ages ago. On second thoughts, matey. Change of plan. Fancy dress. Whatever you want. Can you get your mummy for me? Fantastic. I'll see you then. The more the merrier. Dear Alison, I'm really sorry to have to do this to you, but we've changed the theme of the party. Same place. Bye. Last minute change of plan. Don't get worked up. Work it out with a phone call. There's always one that gets a bit overexcited, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. BT, stay in touch. <laughs> Andrex is soft, long, and strong, even when it's wet. Andrex, strong, even when wet. With the Woolwich, you can parcel up your credit card, store card, and Christmas spending in one personal loan, with the option of taking a free month's break from your repayments next Christmas. Personal loans with the Woolwich. If you're without, ring 0845 607 1111. If we don't receive your completed tax return by the 31st of January, you face a £100 penalty. So do it right away and don't get clobbered. Oh! It's a trabby, but first, from America. What we have here is a supreme off-road machine, but one that's as happy to hustle Nissan Micras around ring roads as it is to dodge sheep on boggy moorlands. Not that the latter is likely to happen to most of these beasts. The chances are that hitting a pothole is the nearest most of these will ever go to being off-road. They've only been available in Britain since 1996, which means there's still a considerable waiting list for them. That's very good news for anyone trying to sell one secondhand, because there's lots of people willing to skip the queue to get one in good nick. And for very good reason, the most powerful version will out accelerate even the new Porsche 911, and that's something that no Range Rover can possibly do. It just makes me wonder what kind of people own these monsters. Well, we're about to find out when we head up the M6 to Macclesfield to meet one such owner and his Jeep. Hello, my name is Russell Keller. I'm from Macclesfield in Cheshire. And this is my beautiful Jeep Grand Cherokee. Bought it for 30,500 um, a year ago and we're asking 25,500 uh, for it. Here we go. I always dreamt about having having a couple of uh, nice car or something like that. And now I can afford it, it's absolutely fantastic to, uh, to go out and get your dream vehicle and bomb around in it everywhere, you know. A bit of posing, really. I think I'm a bit of a poser at heart, really. Look at these. Look at these babies. We must be doing something right because the bank manager just phoned up the other day and said, uh, do you want to come out for a meal? He's never done that before. Get some speed going now. Oh my giddy and My wife loves driving this. Posing about, you know, nice and high up, king of the road. But I've never really felt fantastic in it because I do prefer the sports cars really. Well, what a beautiful car, it's the new one, I've just got it, but the trouble is, I've still got the old one, so that one's got to go. I've got four children, and I want this, you know, this is the car I like, I love it, I've always loved the Jeep, my favourite. Why don't you sell that today? I've told you before, I want this one, I prefer it, yeah, but it's more sporty. We really like getting in a sardine can when we get in that. This has got less... Now most of these come with the manufacturer's warranty, so it'd be hard pushed to find much wrong 
although they do suffer with stone chip damage across the front of the bonnet. And the reason for this is this rather flat front. If the stone's coming this way, it's just going to slap straight in. So if you find bad damage here, the chances are the vehicle's been driven hard, so you'll be wise to check it out more thoroughly. UK-supplied Jeeps are built in Austria, which means they're very well made, but nothing's infallible, and that includes the four-wheel drive Quadratrack system. Now, even if you're test driving one of these cars in a suburban street, do check the Quadratrack's low gear ratios, because they have been known just to give up the ghost, and for no apparent reason. It's worth taking time to check out the tyres. Four-wheel drive cars tend to go through them quickly. Look for signs of tyre wall damage and bad wear on the tread. If you don't, you could be forking out nearly 500 quid for a new set. Take a good look at the underside of these massive bumpers, front and rear. If you can imagine driving through a steep ditch, it's these extremities that are going to be damaged first. Jeeps are excellent news in the second-hand market. They practically walk out of showrooms. And a one-year-old one like Russell's has got to be worth at least £23,000. Yeah, it's a seller's market for these. People are queuing up for them. I think Russell will get more than that for his car. I'd pay him £24,000. I've advertised it for the last few weeks. No response. So we're going to um, take it around the dealers today, see what happens. The dealers won't be paying me as much as I'm asking for, really. I'll have to just see what the, what the offer is. Never been smoked in, has it? No, no, no neither of us are smokers. Can you just tell? <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. It's like that. new, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a very, very clean car, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. Yeah, we well, looked after it, really. You know. Yep, you have. That's for sure. It is actually split mint, is the only word I could use to describe it. Bottom book on the car is £22,050. Oh, right. We'd be quite happy to give you that for the vehicle without any problem. Um, could I ever think about it? It's, of course you can. That's no problem um, at all. It's quite a fair price, but of course, you know... You want to see if you can get a bit more somewhere else. That's right, else. yeah, a little bit more. I can more. appreciate that. We'll go to the next dealer now. Hopefully they'll do us a better deal. Uh, if they do, yes. We'll do the deal. If not, we'll have to advertise it again. It wants two rear tyres. Oh, does it? And it wants a spare as well. Look there, it's right on the wear indicator. There's no life, whilst there's loads of life at the side, there's no life left in that tyre. That's just where the, uh, the wife's hit the uh, garden wall. Nothing much. <coughs> Basically, what we're looking at here is the vehicle's brushed against some hedges or some trees. Ah. Tell you what, this is the most thorough check I've ever seen, really. It's, uh, a little scuffing to that bumper corner there. Right. This is a nitty-gritty. This is where we get down to striking a deal. The cost of preparing your car into an approved status it's £528.75. Yeah. Sounds like you're in Tesco, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it? right. <laughs> yeah. Therefore, my offer to buy your car today is £23,471.25. Yeah. And I do feel that, to be fair, it is a very generous offer, but it's a highly desirable car. Yeah, yeah. So, so round figures, £23,470 is the price that I would pay for your car today. Yeah, that's that's quite good for a cost price. Really, I'll give you less. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think we'll uh, accept that offer that? then. Yeah, thanks okay. very much. Great yeah, stuff. thank you. I'll go and get you a check. Right. Oh, that's the nice, the nice bit. <laughs> well, that'll uh, stop the wife telling me off now because uh, we've been buying that other vehicle I've been paying two lots of uh, everything for the last few months. So Insurance she's... and everything. Yeah. There we go. Great. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, ever Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe he had to take it to dealers. Round where I live, they sell like hotcakes, but he did right to visit a couple of showrooms until he got the price that he wanted. Now, Russell's Jeep was on that forecourt for £25,500 just two days later, a markup of two grand. The Trapan. This has to be the oddest little car that I've ever driven. It's like driving a kettle with a motor. Made from a mixture of compressed cotton and plastic with an almost lawnmower type engine. Trapan's hardly the last word in style. 
They don't even match up to the bottom of the range Skoda, but they are durable and economical, which to be fair is what they were designed for. They run on a mixture of petrol and two-stroke oil, which sounds more like a fuel recipe for a fuzzy 50 motorbike than a car. The engine is incredibly simple and it's so light that one person can lift it out on their own. In Trabant rallies, it's common to keep the spare engine in the boot just in case of breakdown. Fuel economy is brilliant. Go down a steep hill and forth and it will automatically slip into neutral to save fuel consumption. Trabants are strictly for eccentrics and for fun. If you're looking for a quirky car with a bit of history, you could do worse. Dawn has had over the year, and most of that time it's just sat on her driveway. Good talking point for the neighbours, but not much use to her. So she's doing the only sensible thing and getting rid of it. Hi, my name's Dawn. I am a busy mum. I have two children and two dogs. Um, this is my Trabant. It was bought for me by my boyfriend. It's a Trabant 601 Deluxe. My daddy brought it back from Germany. The day he brought it home, it was... Wow, what have you brought home now? The car has um, these glamorous accessories, the original radio, a clock which we think was brought in later, this lovely expired extinguisher, and a first aid kit which is compulsory on the continent. And then I've also been learning to drive from this manual which shows my gear movement. This is the first time I've driven this and I thought it was only the right thing to do is to drive it before I sold it to somebody and it is petrifying. Basically she sat there for six months and it's a shame, she is a lovely car. And in the back you can see there's not a lot of space for my children or my dog. There's not a lot of room in there either. So I won't be putting my dogs in there I'm afraid. Sam! to a good home as she's a lovely old thing who deserves to be looked after and respected oh not like i'm doing at the moment i'm hoping to get 300 pounds for my car which is near enough what i pay for it so i break even i think she should be used and appreciated so, I've, uh, I've decided to let her go. Well, there's one thing for sure, you won't see a rusty Trabant. That's because the vast majority of the bodies are made of plastic. But the build quality is truly appalling, with half-inch gaps between the body panels quite normal. In fact, so long as you can't see daylight between the panels, they're actually OK. It's very difficult for the Trabant novice to tell much about the engine. It has its own unique sound. What can I say? Give the throttle a good firm stamp, and if you can hear any outrageous clattering noises, then you know you've got a problem. Just look at that. In any normal car, that would be the sign of a shot engine, but in the Trabi, it's quite okay. It's the mixture of oil and petrol that does it. If you're buying a Trabi, the chances are it's still going to have its German number plates and you want to make sure you've got all the car's paperwork so you can register it over here. You'll need the registration document from the country of origin, British MOT and insurance certificate and a customs clearance form. This might include a VAT payment which will depend upon the age of the car and where you bought it. Finally, you'll need 25 quid to pay our friends at the vehicle registration office. Trabbies are strangely desirable. And because they're so cheap, you can become a proud owner for next to nothing. Now, Dawn wants £300 for hers, which I think is a bit right. There's no need to spend more than £250. They're a bit of a novelty, and once the novelty wears off, I'd want to keep it as a doorstop. So I wouldn't want to give more than 150 quid. Um, I haven't advertised it anywhere. I've only contacted Graham from the Bank Club magazine. When Graham comes to look at it this afternoon, he will actually be the first person and the only person that really knows it's for sale. And I hope he likes that. Hello? Hi, are you Don? Yeah. Graham? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we'll get the whole <laughs> <on. laughs> 
She just seemed to sweep it under the carpet and move on. Remember, if things are going bad, put on a brave face and you might surprise yourself on how much you can get for your car. Deborah's selling her Golf for £1,100, but first, the Citroen XM. Last year, over two million books for schools were given away, and now it's back. But why do they have to be full packs, miss? They just do. Crisp. <laughs> Itchy, flaky scalp. T-gel anti-dandruff clears even the most stubborn dandruff. T-gel anti-dandruff shampoo from Neutrogena. June Haynes here has been looking after mistreated dogs like Benji for the past 24 years and she's been nominated for a well-earned break. So this year, Thompson are giving her a free holiday. June's just one of 2,000 saints, angels and all-round good eggs who'll benefit when you book with Thompson this January. So why not make someone's year with Thompson's new Smiles in the Sun promotion? See the Daily Mail or Thompson Preferred Travel Agents for details.
você não fez para chamar o último filho. Bom. Então você pode me ajudar com esse muro? He who drinks Australian, thinks Australian. Now it only costs 25p per minute to meet someone new. 0906 272 -7272, the date exchange. Tokens. Now you can get double books for schools tokens on any pack of quavers or french fries. The VW Golf has laid claim to being one of the most popular cars worldwide, with sales currently standing at 17 million. That's quite an achievement when you think that in its first year of production, they only sold 764. Golfs inspire rabid devotion amongst its owners. They're bought by everyone. I've sold golfs to 18-year-old blokes and 65-year-old women alike, and they've all driven off with smiles on their faces. With a sturdy engine, gearbox and bodywork, they were built to last, so even high mileage oldies spell very little trouble. On a performance front, the range of models means there's pretty much something for everybody. All golfs come with bags of passenger space. You get nice firm seats, positive handling, given a supple ride. But if you do a lot of town driving, go for one with power steering, otherwise you need to get yourself down to the gym to pump their muscles up. People are prepared to pay over the odds for golf because they see them as a high quality product. So if you find a good one at a bargain price, you're going to be quids in. Our next story is a complete golf revhead who likes nothing better than on a Saturday afternoon than getting under the car and getting their hands covered in oil. But after playing with a golf for a year, it's time for it to go. <laughs> Hi, my name's Deborah, and I have a Volkswagen Golf for sale and I'm hoping to sell it for around about £1,100. I have an obsession with golfs. I don't know what it is about them, but perhaps it's something to do with their solid appearance. They're just chunky and attractive. I don't know if that's true for all women, but uh, it's certainly true for me. I've looked under the bonnet of quite a large number of Volkswagen Golfs in my time and I, I, think, I think this one's a pretty good one. Um, this one's a bit different, it's got a rear spoiler on it, makes it look a bit racier, so it might appeal to the, the younger, younger male. And basically it's an incredible mix. The cars have always been a part of my life. I blame my father basically because he was always into, had his head under the bonnet of a car. So if I wanted to speak to him, I used to have to go down and speak to him when he was doing things with the car. Now, I'm going to show you mm. how we check the oil level in the car. Uh, I've got three children. They've known for a long time that I've been interested in cars because I'm very rarely not, not reading a car magazine or looking at car programs. So what we do is we, we wipe it off first. Uh, they do complain. She likes watching Top Gear a lot. Mum, we're supposed to be going shopping, not looking at cars. But they're really very tolerant of me. Anything else you want to know? No. No? <laughs> uh, I do get some funny, funny looks in my overall. I'm Deborah's husband and uh, she's always been interested in cars, whereas uh, I couldn't care less. Uh, I, I like driving them, but not cleaning them and not particularly looking after them. So it's, uh, it's good that she looks after them now. I just prefer looking in car shops than in clothes shops. I bought it in Northern Ireland. When I got it home, I found that it needed a bit more work doing to it than I'd anticipated. And so basically I have to sell it now because I can't afford to keep it, sadly. I bought it for £700. I spent £300 on it and I'm selling it for £1,100. Whenever you go to buy a second-hand Golf, it's a very good idea to budget on changing the cam belt, which lives under this cover here. Now, that job will only cost you about £100, 
and it's well worth doing, because if that belt lets go, the resulting damage could cost you about £800. Now while you're under here, lift this bit of trim just here, and you'll see the car's chassis number stamped into the bodywork. Make a note of it, because we're going to come back to that in a bit. I know I'm always banging on about brakes, but golfs really do suffer with weak ones. And if you're thinking of lashing out one or two grand on a golf, take five minutes out just to pop the wheel off and look for any damage on the disc or wear on the pads. Now the reason we made a note of the car's chassis number before was because not all golfs are what they appear to be. Matters are made worse when the engine side isn't detailed in the car's badging anywhere. So if you want to avoid buying a 1.6 when you thought you were buying a 1.8, always check the chassis number against the registration document. Once you've had a good look round inside, turn the engine over. If it sounds noisy, don't despair. The tappets are oil driven and they take a minute or two to quieten down. If they don't and it sounds like a bag of spanners, you could be looking at expensive trouble. Golfs hold their value on the second-hand market extremely well. And I think Deborah knows exactly what she's doing. I think her price is a fair one, but the car is an older example, and I'd like to see some change out of a thousand pounds. So I'm going to offer her 950. Nah, I think she's pushing it a bit rich. It's only worth 750 quid. Let's see who's right. I've got a woman coming from Dundee. She's uh, apparently a hairdresser and uh, she didn't ask me a huge amount about the car but seems interested so um, she's coming shortly and uh, she drives a red MG Midget which I thought was sounds promising why would she want a clap out go <laughs> with a red MG Midget but there we go I've said that I want 1100 but to be honest I'd be prepared to come down 100 to 200 wait and see. She's arrived, that's the main thing. <laughs> Hi Donna, I'm Deborah. yeah, pleased to meet you. Nice Hi. to meet you. Yeah, this is the vehicle. All right. What is it you're needing the car for? Well, um, basically it's the, the car that I've got is not big enough. Um, you got one so child? But one child just now, but uh -huh. my boyfriend's um, six feet odd, ah, and yeah. uh, he can't fit in it very well. In the MG uh, midget, no. <laughs> no. The tyres are not wonderful. No. They're they're wearing a bit thin. You probably need to do the front ones fairly soon. Yeah. I can leave you to look around it if you want. Do you mind us? No, not at all. No, I'll leave you to fiddle about. That's okay. She obviously knows a bit about cars. She says she likes it, so fingers crossed. Come on, look at it too much, you might change your mind. Oh. Hi, Anna. Hi. Um, yeah, I would, I would like to see the car. You want a cup of tea? A cup of coffee? Yeah. No rush. <laughs> <laughs> so I was asking 1100 for it. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to give you 1100 for it. Um, I was thinking about 750. Um, I was obviously hoping for a bit more than that. Uh, somewhere a bit closer. I think the handbrake needs, needs uh, fixing and I would like to get it touched up and sprayed as well. Um, I think the body work is pretty shabby. I feel I would be giving um, it away at that sort of price. Given what you can buy for £700 is not very much. These um, days. Right, I'll go up to 850 I was hoping more like 950 for it. Um, If you can stretch to 900, you've got a deal. Okay, 900. Thank you very much. Okay. Brilliant. Hi. Well, I was worried when she said 750. I thought, well, this has been a waste of time. Because <laughs> it was so below what I was asking. But I hung in there. And although it's 200 less than I was asking, I did say that I was prepared to go 200 below what I was asking. So I'm happy. Sometimes it's a good idea to give the seller a bit of space and an opportunity to look around the car on their own. It can take a bit of pressure out of the deal. It was a classic deal. They both done it by the textbook. The buyer started low, the seller started high until they met in the middle, and everyone was happy. How oh, nice! nice. The Citroen XM, a very popular car in France, but not in Britain at all, because for some reason people would rather drive a BMW or an Audi than a quirky French creation like this. But the XM is a brilliant car, and especially to our second-hand buyers. 
A year ago, a top-of-the-range XM would cost you over £27,000. Twelve months later, you can get the same car for under half that. Such huge depreciation makes them a very attractive buy. The XM... ...that started with Live Aid. This was incredible, because this was, you know, a bunch of pop stars taking the initiative.